Back in October of 2015, I built myself this kindling creator. Got the video published in November of 2015. And believe it or not, this thing has actually generated a lot of interest. I get quite a few comments and emails asking if I have these things for sale. Well, I finally do, five years later. I've actually built and sold a few of these over the years, but only a few, and I've never really enjoyed making them because they're kind of cumbersome to build. Now that I have the CNC plasma table, I have been trying to come up with a design that I can do most of the work with the plasma table and make something that's nice and functional and something I like. And I've finally done it. So that's what this video is about, is my brand new design of Kindling Creator. And yes, this will be a unit that is for sale. And I'll give you all those details at the end of the video. But first, let's build this thing and see how it works. And the Kindling Creator is a great complement to my flat pack grills that I have for sale. And there's my design. Got all my tool paths built. There they are, hopefully in the correct order. We'll start with the holes, and we'll do the blades and these little spacers here in this area. And then we'll cut out these squares here, rectangles here that are, I'm calling them the dropouts because they'll just drop out. And then we'll do the outside of them. So hopefully that's the correct order and uh, it'll cut correctly. <laughs> All right, let's get you set up and watch this thing run. make a few minute changes to my tool path um, when I cut out one of these bars he has this one out of that top piece and I actually cut through I got a little too close to that edge I thought there was more than enough room in there but not quite but it just barely nicked to the corner can you see that there Smooth over just a skosh, it'll be happy. Very little dross on the back side of these parts. The holes have a lot more dross just because you cut slower. The slower you travel, the more dross you get. But I'm very happy with the cut quality. I'm so not this is the blade. It will sit here. These two little spacers go here and here. These two spacers go here and here, and then the next piece goes on top, and there's a kindling cracker. Only it has to be bent. So I'm going to bend it down here, and then it'll bend right up here. So it'll be kind of a U little thing. And we'll bolt it all together. bottom hole here is too close to that bend. It is stretching that hole out and it's just way too close to get a bolt down in there correctly. So yeah, need to move those up about half an inch or so. Okay, so one will go on that side, one will go on that side, and there again my bolt holes in the top are deformed because too close to the top, and then the blade. Get 
Much easier to do on side than holding everything up like this, that's for sure. I just kind of want to stick it together real quick, see what she looks like. There we go. So at the right distance. Yeah, a little tight. I need a little more tolerance on everything. I tried to get it way too close, biting me in the butt. Okay, I did some fiddling with it, drilled out a couple of these holes. Um, I decided they were a little bit undersized on just a couple of these plasma cut holes. That's one of the joys of a plasma cutter is you don't get perfect holes, especially this small. What are you bargain at? Uh, I'm gonna change this height of this piece, see how it kind of comes up into this bend more than I want. Sticks up into this bend, so I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit, move these holes, Well, the next step is to figure out how to put a sharp edge on this blade. I think for now I'm just going to use an angle grinder, or a hand grinder, because that's what they do, uh, and put it on there. I would like to come up with some sort of, you know, automated way of doing it. And I really wish I could do it with the CNC plasma table. Because as you may know, this cut edge from the plasma table is generally very close to glass hard. It's it makes a very good edge right there. So if I could cut that bevel with the plasma cutter, I'd have a good strong edge that would last quite a while. I did a pretty good job of getting a consistent grind, not get a bunch of different faucets, you know, going on there, all on the same plane, what I'm trying to say. It looks pretty decent for angle grinder grinding. Oh, made it on the belt sander here for a little bit. See if I make it look a little bit better and get it actually sharp. Blah. I realize this blade for this kindling creator is just made out of mild steel, it's A36 plate, you know. And not having a good hard steel in this kindling crater is one of the reasons I've kind of delayed this project so long is I've really been trying to figure out how to buy like a piece of O1 tool steel or something and sharpen it and heat treat it and do all that. And I actually have made a couple of these in which I did just use A36 plate and they're holding up wonderfully. It really doesn't seem to need a good hard edge like I thought it needs. So for now, I think I'm just gonna leave it as mild steel and I think they're gonna work just fine. In the future, if there's really enough demand and I get enough feedback that, hey, this blade is not lasting, I'll upgrade. I'm thinking about maybe going to an AR plate of some sort. All right. I'll dirt that one. This is, this piece is hedge, by the way. Osage orange. Ah, it does hit those bottom plates just a little bit there. So, split hedge. It's not going to hold with um, Big piece of ash. I believe it's white ash. No problems there. I am very happy with that. The only thing I can see is this edge right here. Need to have a little bit of a taper to it so the so the wood doesn't just hit that and stop. So if I can taper that out a little bit, that'd be pretty darn nice, but that's easy enough to do. I like this design a lot. So I'm gonna hop back on the computer, make the change that I discussed earlier, and make another one. Now that I have the second one cut out, I've decided I'm actually going to send it to a friend of mine as a Christmas present. So I'm going to put a big N down here in the base, personalize it for him a little bit. My wife found an old English N on the internet, some clip art stuff that we really like. She changed it a little bit, made it a little nicer and a little more plasma cut friendly. But anyways, I'm going to put that down here in the base. I'm going to paint this thing a nice blue and we'll ship it out to him. That turned out amazing. I'll go ahead and do a quick little assembly video here just in case you want to know how to do this. <laughs> uh, so the easiest way I've found is to lay these things on the side like this. 
and put the blade in. I want these to go that way just a little bit. There we go. Pick up the blade a little bit. But this way, you can see the holes, you know, look through it, move the pieces, and not try to hold everything in line all at once. It kind of stays in line all its own. And put the top piece in. And don't tighten these nuts when you're first assembling. Just snug them up. Not even really fully finger tight. Just snug, you know. Once you have it like that, let's simply flip it over and repeat. And I like to set it upright when I tighten it because that kind of makes the base flatten itself out a little bit, if that makes sense to you. And just go through and make sure all the nuts are tight. And now your kindling creator is all assembled and ready to go. If you would like to order one of these, probably the easiest way to do it is to go to our Etsy shop, which is etsy.com slash shop slash wide vision metal fab, all one word, you know, no spaces between wide and vision, you know, you get the idea, right? We will have the option to customize these with, you know, like I did the in and the base of this one or some other option down there you can think of. Just be aware that that will take extra time before we can get them shipped out. And if for some reason you don't want to use Etsy, email me at widevisionmetalfab at gmail.com and we can send you an invoice and have other ways of taking payments and whatnot that way. So either way, but Etsy is probably just the easiest way to do it. I will put our Etsy shop link in the description below and my email address should be under the About tab of this channel. If you go to the channel page and About, it should be down there and you should have to type in a CAPTCHA and it should show you the email address. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I am really happy with how this design and my kindling creator turned out. So if you order one, hopefully you'll be happy with it too. And hop down in the comments and tell me what you liked and didn't like this video, you know, what did you really like seeing and what would you prefer I just leave out next time in a video. We'll see you all in the next one.